Hey guys, so real quick, it's it's late in the shop tonight. Um, I'm busy putting back together uh, 2019 Ford F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost. I just finished a complete timing job on it and I'm ready to pop the intake on. But I wanted to take a second here and show you guys and answer once and for all um, if the dual injection that Ford came out with in 2017 actually fixes the EcoBoost carbon buildup issue. So this vehicle, even, even though it's a 2019, uh, has 125,000 miles on it. So right in that range, 100, you know, just past 100, is usually when you start to see carbon-related drivability concerns on the first-gen EcoBoost engines. Um, so this is a really good example right here. So it's 125,000 road miles, and I think he works in agricultural, so maybe some idle time in there too, a good amount of idle time. Uh, so it'll be a good comparison. So first we're going to show you, I have another EcoBoost outside. It's a 2013 Gen 1 uh, EcoBoost. We're going to show you the inside, the intake ports on that one, the intake valves. Uh, that one's right at 100,000 miles. So we're going to check out that one at 100,000 Gen 1, and then I'll bring you over to this one, Gen 2, at 125,000 miles. We can compare the two and answer that question once and for all. Okay, so here is a Gen 1 3.5 liter EcoBoost. has around 102,000 miles on it. Uh, so let's check it out. I'll try to get down in there, make it nice and clear for you guys. All right. Let me zoom you in, get some lights. Check it out. So this is cylinder one. You can see there's quite a bit in there. Like I said, the first gen, it can get built up and around 100,000, it'll start having problems. You can see the amount of buildup in the, back, the, the intake port and the, uh, the valves themselves. Look at that. Yeah. Let's go over here to this one. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. Let's go to this one. Get the mushrooming on there. Look at that one, dear Lord. So you can see, you know, first gen it's a real issue, especially once you start passing around 100,000 miles on there. It starts causing drivability issues, cold start, misfires, stuff like that. Let's check on the 2019 and see how that one's doing. What do you guys think? The Gen 1 looks pretty darn nasty, right? And it barely has 100,000 miles on it. So this one's all back together after the timing job, ready to put the intake on. I have my uh, endoscope here all charged up. We're going to take a look down inside of there and see what we see. We're going to take you through a walkthrough on each one of these ports on here so we can see if any one of them are worse than the others. And, of course, just see how much carbon's on them. Uh, same style setup on their two valves, two intake valves per cylinder. So it'll be a good comparison. But these are a little further down in there, so we need to use an endoscope to look down in there and see what's going on. Yeah, so... Let's take a look down the cylinders, see how they look. 125,000 miles on this sucker. So honestly, they don't look too bad. I mean, there's definite carbon buildup in the backside of the valves. You can see it on there. It's not enough to cause any kind of, uh, you know, drivability concern. That one's a little worse. Go to the next cylinder. You gotta angle it just right. So they're definitely not perfect. There's proof right there, it's building. On a regular port fuel injected vehicle, you would never see any of this on the backside of the valves. But as you saw on, a, on, on just a standard direct injected, um, it gets pretty bad. I know it's not focusing perfectly. 
but you can get a general sense of them. That one's got quite a bit. So it's not perfect. It's just gonna probably take twice as long. Look at that. See it? You could tell it build up on there. Let's see if we can check on bank one over here. Same thing. The good amount in the back side of valves. But it just won't cause any drivability concern. Let me get this down in here. Yeah, that one's quite a bit. You know, it, it's not perfectly clear, but it, it doesn't take a rocket science to tell you that's not a clean valve. Real quick, just so you guys have a frame of reference of what a regular port fuel injected vehicle looks like after around same mileage this one has 89,000 miles on it how this one looks on the back side of the intake valves and the intake runners on here regular port fuel injection no cleaning has been done to this vehicle this is just how clean it gets uh, by running the high detergent fuel through there um, over time it's constantly being injected and it's constantly being cleaned by it so i'll zoom you down in here and focus you, woo, we're back and forth. You see how clean it is down in there? There we go. So you can see it's nice and clean in there. Even the intake port itself is nice and clean. See that? And that's how clean they should be. So for people to say, hey, the dual injections keep them as clean as a regular port fuel injected vehicle and it's of zero concern, no. Uh, it's definitely not, but it's probably cutting the carbon buildup in half. So this is just a good frame of reference right here. No cleaning's been done to this. This is just how port fuel injection does it. It keeps it nice and clean as you drive. All right, so what do you guys think? Huh? I mean, obviously the second gen EcoBoost engines have about, you know, I'd say half the amount of carbon uh, as the first generation engines under the same driving conditions and same mileage. Um, so it'll probably take 200, 250,000 miles before you start noticing any kind of drivability concerns due to carbon buildup. Whereas first gen, a lot of times I see it right. When, once you get past 100,000 miles, uh, I notice drivability issues, especially on cold starts with the first gen EcoBoost engines. So like I said, in the second gen, it may be 200,000 miles uh, by the time you start having those issues. Well, guess what? Newsflash. Uh, the second gen EcoBoost engines still need timing jobs around 100, 150,000 miles. So whenever you're in there for a timing job, every 150,000 miles, um, you want to go in there and just do a carbon cleaning because everything's apart already. It takes like another half an hour, hour. So it's no big deal in reality if you think about it. But you need to make sure that the carbon cleaning is getting done whenever it's apart for a timing job, as bad as that sounds. Now, the reason why the second gen still builds up on there is because the direct injection and the port fuel injection are not running at the same time. Okay, that's the first thing to know. And the port fuel injection runs at idle and during um, low speed, low load conditions. So once you get into the into the throttle more or you're at wide open throttle or high load conditions, towing a boat, stuff like that, guess what? We jump to direct injection only, that's key. They're never on at the same time. Uh, so there's definite opportunity there for the direct injection to build up the carbon on the backside of the valves. Yeah, that's why it still happens uh, to an extent, but again, if it lasts 200, 250,000 miles before you start getting drivability concerns, then it's really a non-issue, don't you think? The bigger issue is you're doing timing jobs every 150,000 miles if you're lucky in these engines. Uh, so that's all for now. I just want to show you guys, since I have had two real-world examples here, especially it's hard to find higher mileage second-gen EcoBoost out there. Uh, this one was, you know, what? 129,000 miles or something like that. So it's a really good example of real world use and buildup on the backside of the valves. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.